alive. I'm standing outside the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Some people say that this house was designed by spirits. So for the next seven hours, we're going to be investigating that extraordinary claim. So join me, Yvette Fielding, as I lead the Most Haunted Live investigation team into one of the strangest places on Earth. investigation at the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. There are so many long corridors, twisting staircases, rooms and doors that lead to nowhere. What made Sarah Winchester build such a formidable house? Some say it was the ghosts, some say spirits. But we have seven hours to hopefully try and find some activity here, paranormal activity. And to help us do that, it's not just me, I have a whole investigation team. And of course, we couldn't do it without the protection from our medium, David Wells. David, how are you? I'm fine. I'm very, very excited. I'm bursting to get in, in amongst this house. I really am. Have you had any tingling sensations when you walked in? Lots of those, lots and lots of them. I really am so excited to be here, privileged to be here. Do you think we're going to get lots of activity here this evening? I think there's lots of people who can give us activity, so I'll be encouraging them. Okay. To, to come and do just that. Oh, good. Yeah. We can't wait. Now, of course, we have a whole team with us. We have Stuart and Kath and Wigan and our cameraman, Jeff. But, of course, we couldn't do this either without the lovely Carl Beatty or Dr. Kieran O'Keefe. So, please, welcome them. Here they are. Good evening, gentlemen. Hello. How are you doing? Very well. Now, you say very well, Carl, but of course I know, and everybody else knows, that you've been very poorly, haven't you? I have. Mm -hmm. um, it kind of started uh, on the first day we got here, which was a few days ago now, we went into the seance room just to have a look at for cameras and how we're going to shoot the show. And um, since then I've just been ill, and I don't quite know why. And uh, it did affect, I, I was with you, it did affect not only you, it's affected me. Quite a few people have had some strange dreams as well about, about this location. So uh, what are you expecting to happen tonight? Well, I, I, with all the dreams and everything everyone's had, I mean, this is a strange house. It, it's the strangest house, probably the strangest location we've ever been to. And I'm kind of hoping that because of um, Sarah, I hope we, we, we contact her tonight. I, I'm, I, I would love... To, to ask her some questions because there's so many unanswered. Not just contact her, hopefully see her. I mean, that would be amazing, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Now, Kieran, what sort of experiments uh, have you got lined up for us tonight? Well, there's loads of different experiments happening tonight. We've got motion sensor software set up. Uh, we've got a lock-off room. Temperature, we're going to be looking at temperature in one particular room. EVP, a whole gamut of experiments throughout the night. Now, looking at you, a lot of people would say, oh, gosh, look at the size of that guy's butt. It's huge! It's not really, though, it's is it? Not, Turn no. around and show everybody what you got under there. <laughs> is that really <laughs> heavy to carry around? That's all the scientific equipment, isn't it? It is. That's everything that I'm going to be using tonight. So at certain stages, you're going to be whipping bits and pieces out and exactly. taking temperatures and all sorts of things. Yeah. OK, well, I know we've got one heck of a night ahead of us. And of course, who is going to be steering the ship over our seven-hour live investigation? Who's going to be hosting it? Of course, it's Mr Paul Ross. Hi, Paul. Hello, Yvette. Hello, gang. And what a fascinating night in prospect. I would say this is one of the most remarkable houses in America, if not the world. Yeah. And it isn't just, of course, a house. It was somebody's home. Lots of staff and Sarah Winchester actually lived here. So huge potential tonight. And I very rarely get any sense of anything. I'm nervous of you guys going into the dark and doing your vigil. I got a real sense of welcoming coming in here today. Right. I haven't been in the seance room, and I'm going to give it a wide berth, but I'm really looking forward to tonight. But you have got a long slog ahead of you, so I think you better brace yourselves, and let's get the vigil underway. Good luck to all Thank of you. Thank you, Paul. Thank Thanks, you. Paul.
we are in for an absolutely fantastic night. We've given ourselves plenty of times just to explore the scale of this place. It is absolutely immense and you can be our eyes and ears because along with the team this time round, we have brought our king of all things interactive on Most Haunted Live, Julian Clegg. Hello Julian, oh, sir. Lovely to see you, lovely to see you. Now what do you make, what are your first impressions of this remarkable well, building? Extraordinary. We've got doors that open into blank walls, we've got staircases that go into ceilings and don't go anywhere, half plastered walls, it's the most amazing building I've ever been in. I think honest. she must have used builders I've used in the past, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you're right there, actually. And there's also that sense of something that's still organic yeah, almost, exactly. still taking shape. It's creepy in that respect. It is like, it's an ongoing project that, you know, is it ever going to end? Extraordinary place. Now, as soon as the visual starts, of course, we want to hear from people watching right across America. What kind of setup have we got for Right, well, here? we've got eight webcams running tonight, so very importantly, make sure you get in touch with those via our website, and you can look at those. We've got four running at any one time and eight through the whole night. Uh, also, we want text messages on our, our, our text messaging service, and, of course, you can go to the website uh, for details of how to get in touch with your messages. And, of course, we want your psychic art, very importantly. If you feel any premonitions about uh, this building, we could get your pictures on the facts and show them on the air and on our website as well. And the other thing I want to say is if you're a West Coast viewer, don't worry, we want your messages. There's a slight delay on the show, but to be carrying messages live on the show right through until 1 a.m. Pacific time. So get in touch right the way through over the next seven hours. Okay, we've teased you with it. We'll give you the full details later on for the moment. Though. Thank yeah, you, Julian. Thank you, Paul. Good to see you. And I mentioned this house is still a work in progress. It wasn't just built and then rebuilt. It was re-rebuilt. The room, for example, where we started the show, the ballroom, with that marvellous old walk where Sarah Winchester used to sit at night and play, cost $9,000. $9,000 at a time when a decent family home in America could be built for $1,000. That gives you some idea of the fortune that Sarah Winchester spent on this place, and it is still, as we can see, not finished. We do expect to get a lot of hard information tonight from David Wells and the team, sourcing the inf information, checking its relevance, just sorting it out. Is Leslie Smith, our academic and historian. What kind of woman, Leslie, was Sarah Winchester? She was a society girl born on the East Coast and made the most marvellous marriage to William Winchester. And of course, he was a fantastic heir to, to a vast fortune. It should have been a marriage made in heaven. It was, uh, but sadly, uh, their baby uh, that was born um, died within a few weeks. Then she went into depression. She was the belle of New Haven, this girl. She was petite, beautiful, but she became depressed at that point. And then 15 years later, her husband, William, died. And at that point, she changed, changed dramatically. Uh, instead of being this wonderful society girl, she comes over here, uh, buys this place, builds this citadel to the dead. This extraordinary woman then becomes an enigma, a recluse. She's terribly well educated, you know, speaks four languages, Turkish for some odd reason. Um, but she comes in, starts hiding away, won't be photographed hardly ever in her lifetime or uh, pictures done of her and she becomes more and more eerie and we should say that the team david wells can't hear a thing we're saying at this point Nothing so at for all. the moment leslie thank you very much indeed thank you we're going to take the shortest of short breaks i know you're going to stay with us we have a long vigil ahead and a positive plethora of paranormal investigations to get through after this i'm going to be giving you just some idea of what might be lurking in this house for our gallant team don't go away more after this Welcome back to Most Haunted Live and the Winchester Mystery House. Now, over the next seven hours, we are delving into some of its oddities, exploring it. We're hoping to do more than scratch the surface because this house is steeped in history. Here is just a taster of the history of the Mystery House. Following the sad death of her only child and the premature demise of her husband in his early 40s, Sarah Winchester was inconsolable. She sought help from a spiritualist who suggested the twin tragedies were a result of spirits haunting both her family and her fortune, derived from the manufacture of the famous Winchester rifle, the gun that won the West. These spirits, she was told, were hundreds of Native American Indians, Civil War soldiers and others who had met their ends in the barrel of these rifles. The medium claimed that Sarah herself would become the next victim if she did not appease the spirits by building a great house in which these unfortunate souls could reside. Without further bidding, she moved to San Jose and finding an unfinished eight-room farmhouse surrounded by orchards, she threw herself into her allotted task. For the next 38 years, she built her mansion. 
Construction continued around the clock and only ceased at the moment of her death, by which time Winchester House had grown into 160 rooms, with 13 bathrooms, 6 kitchens, 47 fireplaces, 40 sets of stairs and an incredible 467 doorways. We are in for an evening of enormous paranormal potential. It is time, though, for Yvette and her investigative team to start the first vigil. Here is their first frightening foray into the Winchester Mystery House. Thank you, Paul. We're actually heading down now into the basement. We thought this would be a brilliant place to start, to get to the bowels, as it were, the first sort of building blocks of this amazing house. It's pitch black down here, absolutely pitch black. And of course, as you know, Sarah actually thought that the spirits told her to build this house. So part of tonight, we want to be led by the spirits, almost to be, to be pushed in, in a different direction, to be told where to go by hopefully the spirits that we communicate with. We've got to keep our heads quite low here because it's, uh, there's lots of pipes above us. Now, David, as we're walking through here, can you sense anything in here? Can you, can you get a, a feel for any spirits or, or what used to go on down here? It, it feels. Oh. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Just the floor changes. Um, it just feels like a place of, of business. You know, they would, I guess they'd have stored things down here that they would have come and gone with bits and pieces, and that's what it feels like at the moment. Just people coming and going. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing would surprise me down here though, because always in cellars. It, it's about um, hiding things, isn't it? I mean, that's, yeah. you know, so nothing would surprise me. As we go further in, I'm kind of, I'm kind of aware of, of movement, but it seems to be coming, going, like, almost like from the cellar into the, the garden. You know, I don't know whether there's another door or something, but like, someone's going between the two. Okay. I can feel a man going between the two. Right. Um, a work, a workman. Some he's definitely a workman. Yeah. Can you see him? Can you describe him to me? He's quite a big guy. He's wearing, it looks like, uh, I initially thought overalls, but maybe it's like a, a jacket and trousers, you know, but they're the same colour, so they look like one piece. Okay. Where are you? I'm you know? here. It's so <laughs> dark, I can only see the top of your head. Okay, is he active down here? I think people will see him. I think definitely will see him. But there's another one that's hiding in the corners. It seems quieter. Seems more, he seems to be the bigger one. There's a big one and a smaller and a younger one. The bigger one seems to be more up front and in charge. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The little one is um, in corners. All right. He really hides in corners. And what time period are we talking about with these gentlemen? Early 1900s. Okay, so early 1900s. And would they, you say they were workmen, would they have been part of the beginnings of the building, do you think? I think they came in later. I think they came in when, the, when it was starting to be established. I don't think they're right in right from the very beginning. Okay. And do you, do you actually feel that they, they died here or, or they died elsewhere and, I don't know... Oh. What's that, Kieran? It's my... I've got my EMF meter yep. on. Uh, let me just turn the sound down. So no, turn sound. it up. We like the sound. And I think... Yesterday I did some baseline readings and there was a very high reading around here yeah. that might account for some of the experiences. And I'm using a different EMF meter just to verify that that's the case. That and sounds very high to it, me. It is. We're talking, normally you'd expect uh, one, two milligauss as you're two walking around, as you're walking around a house. Yeah. Here we're over 200. So that's incredibly high. It is. And just explain exactly what sort of um, effect that would have on people if, if they were walking around and, and coming down here. Well, there has been some research to show that if people are walking through very high electromagnetic fields like that and it's fluctuating, if people have, it's, a, it's called temporal lobe lability, it's a particular part of the brain that can be stimulated and actually cause hallucinations like people having a sense of presence, People even having visual hallucinations, as they feel as though they see somebody there, and it's all down to electromagnetic field. Okay, now I know for a fact that, and I'm sure Leslie will back me up on this, many people have seen what can be described as a workman down here in the basement. So you're, you're, you're right with that, David. People have seen that. Mm -hmm. But going off the high readings of, e of EMF, yeah. how do you explain that? Because David's picked up on the spirit of a workman down here. Yeah. Well, again, uh, 
with this EMF theory, there's a possibility, because I'm always going for natural explanations, that David is himself sensitive to the electromagnetic field, and he's interpreting the stimulation mm -hmm. as, you know, the, there's a gentleman down here. He's but why would they say they, see, say they saw the same thing? Okay, I understand, I understand the theory, but wouldn't people see something different? But remember where we are, there's this, you know, this product of imagination as a result of suggestion. We're downstairs in the basement, there's lots of plumbing around, and you're talking about a gentleman in overalls. So I don't find it surprising that people see the same sort of Okay, same well, sort of whatever figure. skeptical, Dr. Kieran O'Keefe, <laughs> and of course, I let's just, move into this. Are you alright, Carl? Yeah, I, I just, when, it's funny, just slightly before, you probably got on camera, when, before the EMF went off, I actually walked around the corner because when David was talking, I, f I could hear a shuffling sound, but it wasn't light. It was um, it was like somebody shuffling, and I just went around to make sure nobody's there, and there is no one there in the, around this corner. Actually, and it's happened it a few times. All right, well, that, that's really interesting. Shall we come on through all of us? Because it actually yeah, ends it here. Comes to There's a door here, which I'm going to shut. It goes up to classically a set of stairs. Let's come into this end room. Maybe we should call out. What do you think, David? Yeah, because we try. any name yeah. with him yet? This well, yeah, or no, two gentlemen? He, he's very distant. In in it's almost like you see him walking away from you, to find interesting. He's not walking towards. He's always when I try to fix on him, he's walking away from me. Okay. Well, actually, before we call out, let's just introduce the rest of the of the investigation team. Jeff, do you want to frame up on, on yourself so everybody knows what you look like? This is Jeff. How are you, how are you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good at the moment. It's yeah? uh, such a fantastic location. I, I just want to get into it and uh, get going. Get going. It's only the beginning, isn't it? Yeah. And of course, we've got, um, we call him Shaggy, but he's Juan, our sound man. And we call him Shaggy because we think he looks like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo. Now, last time you were with us, uh, something horrible happened to you, didn't it? What happened? Can you I, remember? I, I, something, I just got a, I don't know, I got really tired. I think I passed out. I you know. passed out. <laughs> I mean, but lots of us were passing out that night. Yeah. Are you, how are you feeling about this location? Uh, it's, this should be interesting. I don't okay. know. It's it should be, be interesting. interesting. <laughs> okay, different feel. Yeah. Stuart, how are you feeling? Uh, very excited and very nervous at the same time. Um, I'm, I'm just ready to rock and roll now, just, just get on with things. Yeah. Okay, Kath? Do you know what? I don't like it here at all. I don't like it at all. It feels funny, it's strange, it's sinister, it's horrible. It's you, a horrible place. So you, you think it's sinister, it has a sinister Yeah, thing. it's like a... it's strange, I mean, ugh. You don't like it. Kath doesn't I like don't, it. I really feel miserable. Ah, and Ian Cash, what well, we call him Wigan because he comes from Wigan in England. How are you feeling, Wigan? I am really excited and looking forward to this. My only one reservation is I've already got lost twice in this place trying to find my way around, so that's going to be the only thing I'm worried about tonight is finding my way around this gigantic property. Okay, we'll all try and stick together as well because if one of us goes off, you know, we're all going to, uh, possibly we could lose someone. And Carl, how are you feeling? We've got to be a bit worried about you because you've not been feeling too well. How are you feeling? No, I'm fine. I, 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 the adrenaline's kicked in and you can't waste this opportunity of investigating this place. I just can't wait to get to the to get into the investigation, really, because it's just a fantastic place. I mean, what Wigan said earlier about getting lost, that's actually, you know, a, a, a serious issue because there are so many rooms and a lot of them lead nowhere. Okay. You can turn around and find yourself completely lost. So. Well, let's, let's crack on then. Should we just call out, all right? We can just do a quick minute of calling out and see what we get, okay? Mm -hmm. So, everybody stand still, everybody be quiet. Let's listen out for any shuffling noises as well. David, do you want to start? Yeah. If there's any astrals, any spirits present, could you please make yourself known now? Can you tap on my pipe or close the door? It's banging. It's in the corner. Some astonishing information it's emerging in the from there. David Wells already. And already disagreement between David and Kieran O'Keefe, our academic, our cold voice of scientific reason. Coming up after this break, more from the vigil, of course, and also details of how you can help us, how you can get interactive with Most Haunted Live, Winchester Mystery House. That's after this. It's strange, it's sinister, it's horrible. It's a horrible place. 
Welcome back to Most Haunted Live, Winchester Mystery House, a special event for us from beautiful San Jose, an astonishing building, a family home, and also a weird monument, we think, to the world of the spirits. The vigil has begun, and you can help us. You can be our eyes and ears, because we want to be interactive tonight on Most Haunted Live, and one man has the details. It's Julian Clegg. Julian. Thank you, Paul. Yes, we definitely want you to get involved with Most Haunted Live tonight. And you can go to our website, the travelchannel.com website, and look at the webcams. We've got eight webcams running through the night, four at any one time, and I'll guide you through the night which ones are running uh, at any point during the show. Now, let's have a look at a map of the Winchester Winch Mystery House, because it's a very confusing place, as you've already heard. Let's have a look at a map here, and this is where our webcams are. On the floor, second floor, we've got five webcams running. There they all are coming up on that map. As you can look at those now on the website. Also, our sixth uh, webcam is down there in the basement. There it is. And then we've got our seventh and eighth webcam on the first floor. So go to the website and uh, look at the map. And let's have a look at the uh, webcams themselves, shall we, right now? First of all, webcam one above the uh, switchback crazy staircase from the first and second floor. There it is there. If you see anything unusual during the evening, let us know. Uh, and uh, please put a time when you see the unusual occurrence, because that's very important too. Webcam 2 is in the 13th bathroom on the second floor. There it is, right there. Webcam 3 is in the Winchester bedroom, the room in which Sarah Winchester died, by the way. Uh, webcam 4 is in the seance room, which is in the center of the house. Uh, webcam 5 is in the Daisy bedroom, the room in which Sarah was trapped after the 1906 earthquake. Then let's move to webcam 6, which is in the basement. There it is right now. Webcam 7 in the kitchen. Now, there have been sightings in this uh, particular area, so I'll be very interested to hear from you tonight if you see anything in that particular webcam. That's the kitchen webcam, webcam 7. And webcam 8 is in the Venetian dining room. There it is. And all those webcams uh, available on our website. So, as I said, throughout the night, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your messages. We want to hear if you spotted anything unusual on the webcams. Are you getting any, any unusual feelings about this extraordinary... Uh, location. Now, there are several ways you can interact with the show. Uh, first of all, uh, you can go to our website, thetravelchannel.com slash mosthaunted. Uh, so let me know your messages then. There's a chat board there too for all your stories through the evening show. Also, you can share your webcam sightings and messages by, by texting us. And uh, here's the text number, tell MHL, MHL for Most Haunted Live, at 99799. And your carrier is uh, a standard mess messaging rate. That will apply. Bear that in mind. And throughout the night, also, we want you to do your psychic art. This is where you take a piece of paper, hold a pen in your right hand or left hand, depending on which uh, right, or whether you're right or left handed. And then basically, the way it works, it's never worked for me, but it works for me many of our viewers is if you feel a spirit that might be haunting the Winchester Mystery House, send your drawings to us on our fax number. Here it is. The fax number is 240-662-8787. Send those pictures and we'll put them on the website and I'll show them on, on air as the evening goes on. So do get in touch, get interactive with the Most Haunted Live. That's what it's all about. But for the moment, back to Paul. Thank you, Julian. Now, Julian mentioned the webcams in two very important rooms. We are planning two seances tonight. One will be in the bedroom where Sarah Winchester died, and at midnight, we're going to attempt to recreate as closely as we can the seances that Sarah herself used to conduct in the seance room. This is an amazing place. It's a maze, as you can see. An astonishing place, still unfinished. And we've already had some amazing information, quite specific, I thought, from David Wells. Let's see what our historian and academic Leslie Smith made of it. I hope you're not pointing that at me, and I hope it's not loaded, Leslie. So, <laughs> a lot of information from David there. He, he, he mentioned a workman or work clothes or something. What else did you pick up on? Well, the workman side is absolutely brilliant. Bang on hit. We've had members of staff here, management, and the general public visiting here have seen uh, the figure of workmen in overalls or that sort of look. The shuffling I liked as well, because one of them's got a very heavy barrow, which of course might be what the problem is there, you know, with the movement. Um, and the little one hiding away. People are constantly talking about the idea idea that someone's staring at them from somewhere. They get this idea. Um, and at the root of all of these spirits that are around is this concept that Sarah felt she was cursed, why she needed to build this citadel. And at the end of it all is this gun, and that's why she believed that she was cursed, thinking that of all the Native Americans that were killed with this gun, because the repeater rifle came with her husband's time. And it was her husband's influence, we think, as well, that may have brought about the rifle being a repeater, which made it so absolutely lethal um, to Native Americans here. It's also almost ironic that Sarah's life straddled 
the death of the Old West and the modern century, and she lived through the First World War. Absolutely, and the other part about it, she was a brilliant inventress, as you'll hear more about later. She invented many fascinating things here. She was a very, very bright woman, but had this really odd obsession, you know, that pulled her away. Well, she was, of course, fabulously wealthy because yes. of the Winchester family's investment in development of the Winchester repeating rifle. Absolutely. Here is just a reminder, a historic reminder, of just how important that lethal machine was to the Old West. The Winchester repeating rifle was famous for its sturdy construction and lever action mechanism that allowed the rifleman to fire a number of shots before having to reload. The model introduced in 1873 was a vastly improved design which became known as the gun that won the West due to its reliability and increased rate of firepower. Sarah Winchester's enormous wealth was built from it. On the death of her husband, her financial resources became virtually unlimited. As well as a fortune that ran into millions of dollars, she owned nearly 50% of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company, which gave her an income of $1,000 a day, equivalent to well over 20 times that amount today. It was a fortune built on an appalling legacy. The rifle was responsible for hundreds of thousands of deaths. The Winchester fortune became an inheritance that Sarah was evidently uncomfortable with. Ironically, it was this very fortune that funded the 38-year construction of her home and her lifelong obsession with appeasing the spirits of those who had died. And of course it wasn't just Native Americans who died, although there's a very moving statue in the garden of a Native American which must have haunted her, I suppose, to the end of her life. Uh, there's no doubt at all she felt that she was cursed. She felt that, um, in fact, somebody suggested, who was a, uh, somebody in Boston who was a clairvoyant medium, um, that every single person that was killed with a Winchester bullet was haunting her. And she must build this citadel for the spirits, for the dead. Um, and it got so bad at one point, so creepy, she was actually holding dinner parties like a sort of um, some creature out of a Dickens novel and, and laying out 13 places, and she was number 13, and playing the organ for these people. It became these dead people. I can tell the academic in you, Leslie, is absolutely enjoying every second of this. Thank you for the moment, Leslie Smith. Plenty of food for thought there. Remember, we want you to keep watching the webcams during the break. Do stay involved. This is Most Haunted Live, the Winchester Mystery House. The vigil is continuing. The last time we were with Yvette and the team, they were calling for spirits. We're going to find out how they got on after this. back to Most Haunted Live from the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose. We're going to rejoin Yvette Fielding and the team now, who the last time we were with them were calling out for any spirits who might be around. Let's see how they've got on. Yvette, how are the team? Hi, Paul. Um, we're all a little bit jumpy because we've all been hearing uh, noises, um, banging. Kath has been um, sort of really poked quite hard in, in the back. Um, we've been hearing um, which... Um, uh, Shaggy's picked up on, on the boom a kind of uh, noise, which is a little bit freaky. Oh, Jesus. What was that? You all right? There's no one the door just moved. The door's just moved? Yeah. Is it? There's no cables on it. There's no cables on it. Yeah. All right. Which door? This one? This one. Okay. We're, we're where we are. Well, well, you were further back there. When she started talking to me, but you walked up here. Okay. I saw there was nothing here right. at all. There's definitely, there's de David. There's definitely somebody here, isn't there? Yeah, there is. There's definitely this this workman. Okay. He's he's either Eastern European or German. Okay. Um, he's he's very his face is what you know you would describe as lived in. Do you know what I mean? He has a very much head. He has a very um, he has a very round face, but it's very. I don't think wrinkles the word worn. It's a better word. Okay. You know? Watch the dip there. There's a dip there, Kira. Yeah. He, oh, no. he's um, he's quite a big chap. He's not fat, but he's very big. He's a very large man. Does he does he feel quite aggressive to you, or does he feel okay? Okay. He feels he feels quite he feels like you know really committed to really committed to doing the best job he can. Mm -hmm. Towards me, he just seems at the moment a little bit. 
indifferent. He's very aware that we're here. And it's him that's, m that's messing with us, maybe, making the I noises? Well, I think he's making noises going about his, you know, going about whatever he's doing. I think it's the little one that I'm more concerned about. Oh, really? You said now he was in, this, in, the, in, the, in the corners, in the shadows. Yes, exactly. And that, that's an indication. Perhaps, it's, perhaps he isn't. Perhaps it's just an indication of my mind to be wary of him, because that's where he hides in the corners. And you said, and, and what, what nationality is he? Spanish. So he's Spanish. So Spanish. Kieran, you speak Spanish? Possible Spanish, yes. Do you, want, do you want to call out in Spanish, Kieran, for a little bit? OK. Uh, hay espíritus aquí. Hay alguien aquí con nosotros? Estás aquí? Do I right, cat? There's something really behind us. Is that? What sort of noise? It's like a shuffling down this corridor. Shuffling? Down there. Okay. Is that you, Carl? Yeah. If there's anybody here, please talk to us. Give us a sign. Let us know, let us know that you're here. <gasps> what did you hear, sir? It looks like a growl. Do you know what I don't like about this one? I, I know what they sometimes do is put. Sometimes guys or whoever will put shapes and forms into my head to give me an indication of what I'm dealing with. And it's all, they've, they've made him very mercurial. In other words, he seems to be able to move very swiftly and pop up wherever. Do you know what I mean? Okay. All right. I don't like this one. Cat just walked up to me and said, I'm here. I'm here. Cat's behind Cat's over me. Here. Cat's here? Cat's You're behind, behind me. me. What? There's no one there? There's no one there. No. I, 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 was, I turned my torch on because I thought, I thought Cat was here, so I just wanted to see where she was. And it was somebody coming, and I thought it was Kath, and she said, I'm here. No, I'm definitely down here. No, I can vouch for that. Let's call out. Let, let's, let's call out. If there's anybody here, if there's any spirit people here, if there are two gentlemen that worked in this fantastic house, helped to build it, we know you're here. Please, can you make a noise for us? Can you bang? Can you throw something? Touch one of us, perhaps. We don't mean you any harm. Did you hear that? Can you hear it? Yeah. Uh, have you got it, Shaggy? I heard it. Please knock twice if you can hear me. Please knock twice clearly if you can hear me. If there's anybody here, please, we don't mean you any harm. We just want to talk to you. What was that? What was that? That was like a... Da -da 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 -da. That was different. That was different, wasn't it? Let's keep walking up to the top. We've got to make 100% sure as well that nobody's walking above us. Absolutely. Mm. Please like come and talk to us. We don't mean you any harm. We just want to know that you're here. Sure. We can help you. Make a noise. Touch one of us. What's the what? 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 What's the matter? Something just must have grabbed my shoulder. Honestly. Holy oh, sh. Alright, you okay? No, I'm not, no. Jesus. Where's Carl? I'm right here. Yeah. There was no one behind you, Stu. There was no one there. Carl's there was no one in front of me. It was, it was like someone coming up to me from behind and grabbing and squeezing my shoulder. Stuart, oh. call out. Stuart, call out. Okay. Go on. <sighs> okay, I'm in shock. If there's anybody here, could you please come forward? My name's Stuart. If that was you, that touched my shoulder. Could you please do something else? Either for me or another crew member that's down here. We're not here to disrespect you in any way. What's that? What have you seen? What's that? I didn't see anything. It's like somebody was actually behind me running away. Okay, David, let's get up there. Jeez. But there's nowhere for them to go. There's a brick wall. God. Yeah, I got it. You're right. I'm sweating so much now. Oh, God, you are. 
That's nice. I'll just wipe your yeah. hand on your left jacket. Oh, Let's go in there then. What? Somebody was in here. So, something was there. It was definitely it was big. Run away. Come on. We don't mean you any harm. Make a noise. Okay. Touch somebody. Yeah. It's so dark down here. It really is dark. Oh it's, uh, what's Did happened there? That? I yeah. heard. No, I was a growl behind that. Did you hear that, Carl? Definitely. A growl. It was a. It was a growl. It was like ah, 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 like that. Come on, use your voice box if you have one. Oh, I don't know. Do they? Do they? No, they don't. They, they can manipulate. So it sounds, but they don't have a voice. Box. Come on, copy me. Copy me. Whistle back. Make a noise. Let us hear your voice. Kieran, any readings in here? That you I still am. Not everywhere. I mean, it's interesting as you pass around this corner, it's not as high as it was in the other part. So we can't use EMF to explain their experiences, but there are a few further back. Okay. All right, let's walk slowly back. Oh, what was what that? What was that? What was that? That could have been us walking. No. Oh, hang on, no. So there was a chink on the pipe. pipe. All the pipes are too high for us. Did you? It was like this. Look, I've got my look. Yeah, well, it was it was higher, 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 higher than that. That's, so that's something on the pipes, definitely. Yeah. Can you make that noise again? Copy me. Copy me. Please. Did you work for Sarah? Did she like talking to you? Did she talk to you in your own language? You said that, didn't you, David, during mm. the break, that he said to you? The older gentleman liked it because she spoke to him in her, in his own language. Which was? German, know, I think. German. Okay. Let's walk back slowly, everybody, and let's keep calling out and see if we get anything else. Kira, let me know if there's any uh, strange readings that you haven't picked up yet. Okay. I mean, it's, look, there's so many cables yeah. and, and things, so, you know, we that know that. something we have to watch out yeah. for. Please, give us something so we can see you. Let everybody that's watching this see something. We don't mean you any harm, I keep saying that, because we truly don't. We can help you if you want our help. Everybody feeling all right? Yeah. Silence. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you okay? I think we're all a little bit on edge after that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go back to Paul um, in uh, the other part of the house. Paul, so far, a few little things, very interesting. I think it's been a good start to the uh, investigation. Everybody's a little bit jumpy, as you can probably tell. Thank you, Yvette. Stay safe and you stay watching. We are taking the shortest of short breaks. We'll be back. Keep watching the webcams after these messages. Trying to move around the way. Yeah. There's a bang. What was that? Bang? I heard the bang. Oh, that's a second bang now. What's the matter? Did you hear that, Carl? Definitely. A growl. It was a. It was a growl. a few moments ago in the Venetian dining room where the seance, seance is still continuing. Let's get straight back there. Okay. 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 Now, Kieran, you know some words. We've got this native American Indian here. You're saying, you just said to me when we were in the break that he had a kind of Mexican yeah. feel to him as yeah, well. Yeah, and he's very high. He's, his cheeks are very high. His eyes are very small. Okay. Kieran, and you know some 
sort of words? Well, yeah, I did some research about the Native American Indians that would have been around here, and the Tamien tribe would have been focused in this part of Santa Clara Valley. And we don't know the words for their tribe, but we do know the Mutz, Mutzen tribe, which is kind of the next one. So we can hope that he'll understand the following words. Okay, shall we try? Just let's see if he's still here. He might have. Is he still here, Carl? Mm -hmm. He is. Okay, hands on table. Have go on, Kieran. Musmin Turkis. What does that mean? Hello. Oh, Musmin Turkis. Why am I saying it in an accent? I have no idea. Musmin Turkis Ka Kieran. Musmin Turkis Ka Yvette. See if you can say it. Go on. Muskin Turkish. <laughs> Stuart Torrevel. <laughs> Stuart, you can't say it. Yeah, I can. I would say uh, Tumsanak Kanis, which is saying thank you for being here, basically. Oh, how do you say it? Tumsanak Kanis. Tumsanak Kanis. Two taps. Two taps. Okay. Oh, can you get that? Can you get that? Get the boom right down, Shaggy. Okay. We're going to put the glass into the centre of the table now, sir. Please, would you help us? Okay. I think you know what we want to do. We'd like to send one person to an area in the house on their own. Please, will you choose somebody to do that? If we all put our fingers on the glass, he said yes, he's just tapped twice. Okay, let's see where we go. Everybody put their hands on top of the table, the other hand. Please, if you can move the glass, sir, to the person that you wish to go on their own into another part of the house. It's moving. It's moving. Move it to the card, please. The card with the person who you want to go on their own into the house. How bizarre is that? Turn it over, Stuart. Who is it? Can I see? Can I have a torch? It's Wigan. Oh, great. Wigan. Uh, it's like winning the really evil lottery, isn't it? Wigan, you go go going off on your own. <laughs> Wigan, out of everyone here, I'm really pleased it's you. <laughs> I am too. That's amazing because he's not sat around the table, but he's part of the crew. And we also have. Oh, he's a... tapping. Listen, okay. put that down. Shut. Put, put the boom down. Is that right? You wish Ian. This person here, you want him to go? Okay. We're going, we're going to send you to the 13th bathroom. Right. This was Sarah's very private room. Okay. There's a web camera up there with sound on it. Mm hmm. And we take you up there and we're going to give you a piece of equipment. Kieran, do you want to explain exactly what it is? Yeah, this piece of equipment is uh, it's an ultrasonic meter. And basically, it picks up ultrasound. And that is sound that's too high for humans to hear. And Yvette has a theory that perhaps the reason why we don't hear the spirits all the time is because they're speaking at a different level. They're speaking ultrasonically. And so this meter may pick up ultrasound and then it converts it into sound that we can hear. So you're already hearing noise and other things. If I kind of hit metal, you can hear it clicking. Yeah? yeah? So if you just hold that, and then obviously if anything comes through, then you can report it. Yeah? Fair enough. What we'll do, Wigan, good luck. Um, <laughs> we'll get um, um, Jim, who's one of the, the guides here, he'll take you up to the room. When you go in, shut the door, okay? Um, and we're going to call out and um, ask th things to happen to you while you're up there. We'll give you a walkie-talkie and let's see what happens, okay? Okay. Good luck. Thank you very much. Hey, how, do you, how are you feeling? Nervous. <laughs> I, bet, I bet you are, yeah. But you've been specifically called, so... So what's he got in store for me then? I don't know, but we're actually, this is actually taken from the idea, isn't it, of Sarah Winchester was talking to the spirits, they sort of made decisions and, and told her how to build this house, so we thought part of the investigation, as I said at the beginning of, of the show, we would, would take our lead from, from the spirits, which is what we're doing here, so hopefully we should get something, you never know. Oh! <gasps> It's just tapped, see? Jackie, can you listen? It's going down repeatedly. Get your boom down. Does it work out? Good luck, Wigan. Good luck, Al. 
Good luck, sweetie. Off we go then. Stuart, we need some walkie-talkies. Yeah. Okay. Good luck, Wiggy. We're thinking of you. If you want out, just shout me. Okay. There's also a trigger object in that particular room. It's actually in the shower room. And um, unless it's changed, which I don't think it has, it's a Winchester rifle. Now, we put the Winchester rifle inside Sarah's um, shower because this was a very personal place for her. So hopefully the Winchester rifle might move um, and we can just keep your eye open for that, okay? Yeah. All right, remember to so call out. So what, roll that back. I'm in a room with a gun. Yeah, but it's not loaded. Oh, that's <laughs> Okay, <laughs> good I luck. Did, I did ask for it to be loaded, but I said no. Fair. Off you go then. Okay. That's we'll continue here end. then. Okay. <laughs> good luck. Thank you. Yeah. Is it turned up? Yeah. I am so relieved that wasn't me. <laughs> How relieved. Bye, Wigan. Bye. 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 Good luck. <gasps> Gosh. Bye. Oh, no. He's going to come back and change man, isn't he? Isn't that weird? Yeah, but the thing is, remember, he went off a boy, he will come back a man. <laughs> okay. Shall we, um, what would you like to do now? Let's just keep talking to him. Let's, well, let's see if there's anyone else. Let's... What? Anybody else here? Yeah. yeah. Are you ready? Thanks, Stuart. I haven't got Have you really? Oh, God, yes. Yeah, Stuart, thank it's you. throbbing now. Thank you. Can you hold on to it, actually? Just hold on to it for me. Are you ready? If there's any spirits here in this house, and I know that there are, please come forward. Please use our energies now. Please talk to us. There that time. No, no. no. Should we go with you? Uh, no, stay there for a second because I don't want to disrupt anything. It's just Kieran with 300 pieces of scientific equipment attached to his waist. Okay. Okay. I wonder, what, wonder why he wanted Wigan to go up there. Well, we know nobody was walking past the door. There was no light that could have set it off. And so the alarm that went off at that particular point, if anything was caught on the webcam, people would know. And also we've got the backup, which is the DV cam. Okay. So we need everyone to look at that webcam and see yeah, if there's definitely can you give me the, uh, point where the alarm talking? went off. Okay, I'll just check on Wigan. Wigan, can you hear me? Wigan, can you hear me? Uh, yes, I can hear you. Okay, we're going to start calling out now, Wigan, all right? Just let us know how you feel. I can let you know how I feel now if you want. How do you feel now, Wigan? <laughs> Bloody nervous. Okay, here we go. You ready, guys? Mm -hmm. David? Yeah. Go. If there's any astrals present, any astrals present, please come forward. Oh, what? Okay, Shaggy put the boom down underneath so we can hear the tapping. Okay. Ask, ask him what? Ask him to do something to Wigan, like um, push, push him or, you know, flick his ear or do something like that, yeah? That infrared gadget that Kieran gave me, she's going mad. Oh. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. Okay. No, it's not an infrared gadget, it's a, it's a sonic, sonic meter. Oh, sonic meter. It's a sonic meter. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, you ready? We're getting tapping. Ask him to do something to Wigan now, David. Could you, could you please, the person that you separated from this group, could you please touch him on the head? Just touch him on the head for me. Oh. Oh. Is it Tangles creaking. Please come closer. Help us move the table. Oh, it's going mad. Is that mad. you talking to me via this? All right, Kieran, it's going completely mad. The ultrasonic um, meter is going mad up there. Are they Why able would it to be doing that? What the? Yeah, we'll be able to record it, surely. Yes, yeah, so they're recording yeah. it, yeah. Please affect that piece of equipment. He has more. Just make it go louder if you can do that. Oh, Impress sorry. your voice on it if you can. Put your voice on it, yes. Talk to it. Yes. Talk to it. Talk to that piece of equipment. Whisper into it if you can. Please, please. 
Listen to the table going. Please. Help us, help us, please. Did you used to help Sarah talk to the spirit? Did you used to help Sarah talk to ghosts? Oh. Are you alright, David? Yeah, someone's come right over me. What has? Oh, they're tapping, they're tapping. This one is a... Oh. He's a lay preacher who argues... It seems like he's arguing with Sarah about her practices, I guess. Can you hear his voice? He has a very southern drawl. Okay. Any name with him? So the world of science is meeting the world of the spirits. An awful lot of activity and a very nervous Wigan on his own. We're taking the shortest of short breaks. We'll be back after this. to Most Haunted Live. We're here at the infamous Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California, and this is what's happened in the last two hours. It was like there was something in front of his face and he was trying to move it out of the way. Yeah. There was a bang. What was that bang? I heard the bang. Oh, what's the matter? Grab my shoulder. Do you hear that car? Definitely. A growl. It was a... It was a growl. Do whatever it is. Did you mm. laugh then? I heard. Where's Cat? <sighs> really? It's like a female voice. It's what we heard in there before, is that that light pitch? Oh, girl. did you hear it? Yes. There? Yeah. It smells in here. Strong, really. I heard that. I heard. Shall I tell you what I heard? Mm. That's just exactly what I heard. Yeah, absolutely. Tap again. It's coming from, from the wood. Oh. oh, there it was again. That was loud. Do you know what I want to do? Let's get this seance going now. Yeah. I'm Yvette. <gasps> the table's moving. There. God, look, Carl. Just touch my arm, my, my shoulder. What? What the day? What the? Sounds like a flipping monkey. Shit. Oh, don't. Oh, don't. Is that yes? We are investigating one of the strangest houses we've ever been in on Most Haunted Live, the Winchester Mystery House, and you are helping us. Let's get interactive now with Julian Clegg. Thanks, Paul. Yes, we want you to get interactive. You already are, but please keep your messages coming. We want, we want you to text me. I want you to go on the website. I want you to fax me your psychic art. Interestingly, on psychic art, um, what's that Native American look like that David Wells has been talking about? Uh, send me a psychic art picture, please, of your idea of what that uh, Native American might look like. Uh, lots of messages for, from you as well. Um, Anne in Chicago says, don't let any of the teens say the word coward. Apparently she's been watching the show over the years. When people say the word coward, something happens to someone near them. So I'll pass that on to the team. And we'd like to hear from you, by the way, if you'd like to suggest who should go into a vigil on their own. Wigan's already done that. Who else would you like to see go to a vigil on their own tonight? Get in touch and we'll pass that on to the team a little bit later on. Robin in San Francisco says, I took the tour around the house today and there was a lot of activity on my digital camera. Very interested to hear from you if you've been on the tour uh, around the Winchester Mystery House. What happened to you? Did you take some pictures? Let us know. Now let's look at the webcams and first of all we'll start with webcam two. This is in the 13th bathroom. There it is uh, on the screen. You see Wigan is uh, still there and there was a suspicious uh, orb in the 13th bathroom according to Ritzer from Pennsylvania. A number of you are saying there have been uh, orbs in that room, a lot of activity on that one. And that's interesting because that's where Wigan is right now. That's the 13th bathroom, webcam 2. Tell me what you can see on that one. Now, webcam 3, the Winchester bedroom. Now, there it is. Um, Alex in uh, Fresno says, I keep seeing a shadow of people on the far left corner of the camera. Uh, thank you for that message. Also, on webcam 3, this has to be the busiest webcam of the night so far. Uh, the bedroom seems to be a hotbed of activity. I saw the table move 
move a little and keep seeing flashes of light moving across the camera. Thank you for that message. Do say who you are and where you're from, by the way, when you text me. Uh, here's another one. I keep, I'm watching the show. Lots going on on webcam three. Keep seeing shadowy figures. Uh, here's another one. Lisa in Pennsylvania just saw a black shadow move across webcam three in the bedroom. It was a black image of a person. Uh, so let's move on to webcam four now, the seance room. There it is. I'm having a lot of weird feelings about the seance room. Uh, whenever I watch that webcam, I'm feeling dizzy as well. A number of you saying that watching that webcam is making you feel rather strange at home. So thank you for that message. Uh, and also Sherry in pa Panama City says on webcam four, I'm seeing a grey mist floating over the floor in the seance room. That's just the kind of thing we like. Do remember, tell me when you saw the, the sighting as well. Timing's important too on this as well. And then moving to webcam eight in the Venetian dining room there it is now uh, and uh, the message on this one uh, from ghost flame says a shadow ran on uh, right across the camera on webcam it looked like a child and went by too fast to be a member of the crew I'm sure it was a child not a crew member so that is webcam 8 now uh, webcam 8 by the way the team have just stepped outside uh, on that one just so you know and you can see you can see the light there in the background on webcam Eight, eight, and of course, Kath is feeling rather unwell in that one, so it's interesting you're getting uh, sightings on that too. Now, let's look at some um, psychic arts, and this one's come through. Kaiser in California, thank you for that. This is a worker in the house. Be careful, guys. I saw this uh, figure in the doorway. Thank you very much indeed for that one. And here's another one from New York City. Paul, thank you very much indeed. This is the seance in the Winchester House taking place. That's lovely. Now, we like to receive those. Here are the all-important numbers if you want to get in touch with the show. You can uh, text me, uh, tell MHL, Most Haunted Live, at 99799. Also, fax 240662. 8787 for your psychic art like that and of course don't forget the website travelchannel.com slash most haunted for all your messages and to look at those webcams more from interactive a bit later on for the moment paul back to you thank you julian do keep those interactive messages coming please we value your input the show would not be the same without it what a house this is, 13 bathrooms and the number 13 plays a huge part in sarah winchester's life her will even had 13 sections, and she signed it 13 times. But some very concrete sightings coming through, which I now want to put to Leslie Smith, our academic and historian. Leslie, I suppose the thing that we should first grapple with is this Native American chap, maybe mid-40s, wearing buckskin with a headband. Is there anything on that? Yeah, I think we have, um, and it's caused a bit of excitement here on the table when I found it. I'm not absolutely convinced that what David's got is, is a living bodyguard, but a spirit bodyguard. And that's because of a quote I have found here in the American Weekly, which appeared in 1928, six years after her death. Quote, when Mrs. Winchester set out from her seance room, it might well have discovered the ghost of the Indian or even of a bloodhound. Now, the bloodhound is particularly interesting as well. Anybody who spent time with bloodhounds as I have, they make very odd noises compared with other dogs. They don't bark in the same way. And the noises are rather apish. So I'm fascinated that appears in there. Because and we've heard from Yvette the yeah. sound of a monkey, and Stuart heard it as well. It sounded like a monkey. Bloodhounds sort of yodel. They make the oddest sounds when they're there. Are you and sure it wasn't a monkey in a bloodhound suit you had? It could have been. It's a very strange house. Um, but then when we say the ghosts of the Indian, of course, in those days, it didn't say Native American so forgive me for using that phrase, but you've only got to look in the front garden and you see this statue of Little Fawn there, this beautiful statue of a Native American standing there in the garden. So she was obviously a great admirer of these people. Now, I mean, I think it would have come out at some point, surely, despite the secretiveness, that she had a bodyguard who was a Native American. It would have caused quite a stir. Oh, and the lay preacher as well. Of course he would have come and remonstrated with this woman. It was known she put on occult gowns and had seances between 12 and 2 in the morning. So this is the person with the southern accent, the yes. southern American accent, talking to her and yes. effectively trying to tell her off. Well, I, wouldn't, I didn't find this individual, but I would think that most um, people in the area of the religious persuasion at this time would have been horribly shocked by also, this woman Leslie, doing this. Uh, and rather quickly, Sorry. any evidence of a child yet? No. Got the dead child. But look, look how many workers there would have been here. We don't know the exact numbers. Some of them may well have had children. We haven't got it yet. And was it from the house before Mrs. Winchester? It was here. That's another thought, isn't okay, it? Okay, we're going to gather more information, more evidence, of course. Do keep watching. We are going to take a very short break. But as you heard there from Julian Clegg, Kath, one of the team members, a valued member of the team, was taken very unwell. She felt very uncomfortable during the seance. Here's what happened to her. We're back after this. What's the matter? 
Is there something strange going on? Oh Come with your hands. Oh,